Good morning. It's been a couple days since I edited the video for my um, house dress or my Victorian wrapper. And one of the things that I wanted to pop on really at the beginning of this video is to say thank you so much. Uh, two weeks ago, I posted a video that kind of blew up a little bit on my channel. And so many of you had so many very kind and generous and uplifting, graceful, compassionate comments. And I thank you for that. That's the kind of community I know that I belong to. And it was really nice to have some uplifting validation from my viewers, all of you. And I thank you sincerely for that. Since my release of the video about the mail that I received, I have had an outpouring of amazing positive support from my viewers. I have received things in the mail that are uplifting, lovely, and I very much appreciate it. Thank you so much. I really do like mail. <laughs> Uh, I also want to do a special shout out to uh, some recent Kofi donations and a extremely loud shout out to Zelfia. Thank you so much. Your generosity is beyond measure. And Serena, thank you very much as well. Uh, those pennies add up to me being able to buy some nice fabric patterns or things that I can turn around and share as content to you, my viewers. I hope that I'm inspiring creativity in you. Come join the community. Thank you and enjoy this video. Hello, my beautiful lovelies. So we are day two into making a wrapper and I am using the base pattern for the truly Victorian tea gown from 1882. Now, when I say I'm using this as a base, what I am saying is that I am not going to put the Watteau pleating in the back. I've just eliminated that from the pattern piece, but I am using um, the front piece, the side piece, and the back piece minus the Watteau. I'm also using the front piece. And something else that I've done is I've added a yoke, a colored yoke, both on the front piece and the back piece. Now, I'm gonna show you what I've done so far. What I have done with this pattern, the instructions say that if you want it to be kind of a loose fitting gown, not to put the darts in the front. And so I have not put darts in the front. This fabric that I got, was from indeedfabrics.com, I believe, and I got exactly five yards. Now, what I didn't realize, and it's my bad because I didn't check, is that it was 45 inch wide fabric. And I normally buy 60 inch wide fabric at five yards and it's plenty. So I'm a little short in my fabric. I'm using scrap fabrics to accent and to do the interlining. So the interlining is a cotton muslin fabric, really lightweight. The facing is gonna be a blue cotton fabric that I made a blue skirt from before, if you've seen any of my previous videos. I am currently in the place where I'm about to attach the facing pieces and I'm gonna put all the buttons and buttonholes in first before I sew the sides and the back together and then the sleeves. And that's just kind of where I'm at right now. And I'll be back in just a bit. So you can see I've started pinning the front facing and I will pin that all the way down, sew it, and then I'm going to figure out which side the buttons and the buttonholes go on and I will put those in first before I assemble the rest of the wrapper. Okay, I wanted to show you here. So I have sewn the front facing right sides together with the front, okay? I've pressed the seam and now I am pressing it to where the fashion fabric 
shows just a little bit on the edge because I want to make sure that the facing doesn't roll out. So I'm going to stitch all the way down this line. That's also going to give me a really nice edge to where that button placket's going to be. And then I'm going to measure out and figure out where the other side of the button placket is. I'm going to sew another stitch all the way down the front. Okay, please excuse the dryer in the background. So I have successfully put a button placket in here and I've sewn buttonholes on the other piece and I have fray checked, but it's drying. So I'm not going to show you that. So I have made a belt out of scrap right here and I'm going to sew that in to the center back seam at the waist right here. Okay. So I'm going to put it in the seam so that it ties going this way. Does that make sense? So you can see I have sewn the belt and right sides together, and now I'm gonna iron it flat, clip the seams, and then I'm gonna sew all of that encased. And then when you look on the outside, it'll all be inside this casing. So that is what a French seam is, and that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so here are my waist ties, and I totally put one on wrong side out, but I'm not redoing it. It's a wrapper, I'm not too worried. But it is double sewn, and this is the French seam. For the most part, I am pretty content with that. And so now I'm going to put the front piece on and then I will look at what I'm going to do for the sleeves and I'm going to do the side piece with the French seam as well. Uh, so wrong sides together and then flip it. Because I basically forgot to film 90% of it. <laughs> so we're going to start with the back. I used the Truly Victorian TV 432, the 1882 tea gown or wrapper. And the reason I chose this is that I wanted this shape without a whole bunch of extra bulk. And I did achieve it. This piece and this piece are separate and they're very fitted here at the waist. Okay, and they have a little bit of fullness here at the bottom, but there's not a lot of fullness. This is just enough room to do comfortable walking. It's not a lot of extra skirts. Now I added a yoke on the back and I did a little bit of embroidery at the collar and around the edge. And I did the yoke as a contrasting fabric because I wanted to have something a little bit more solid around my face and not so much of just the light blue and the flowers. There's two pieces here and then there is a side piece and a side piece. Now when I originally did this I put belt sewed into this back piece. Don't do that. That's a very bad idea. It it pulls wrong when you tried to pull it closed. So I ended up taking those off and reattaching them on the other side. These are the sleeves and I made the sleeves a little poofier and I made them curved. So you're going to see that it's a very similar sleeve to some of the others I've used that has a curve to it. Um, I find that this is just a lot more comfortable. Now, this blue flower, blue and white flower fabric, I got exactly five yards and it's the 45 inch wide fabric. And I thought it was wider, so I didn't actually order quite enough. So I ended up having to piece. So the sleeve piece is actually, um, the top is actually pieced because I didn't have enough of this fabric in the length laying it out. This is a piece and this is a piece. And as you can see, I put the belt right at that seam on the side. This shape, is interesting. You'll notice that I didn't have to put the yoke fabric anywhere except on this back piece and on this front piece because this yoke sits right up into the underarm and it makes it very comfortable to move in. Um, and it also forces that arm's eye up high so you don't end up any with any pulling here 
once you get the sleeve on. Now the sleeve is full at the top and not as full at the bottom. You can see there's no actual bunching here. So the gathers are eased in from this piece all the way across to where the yoke ends. That's where all the gathers are on the sleeve. And I did that in, on purpose because I wanted more fullness at the top of the sleeve and less bulk underneath and behind. Um, I didn't want it to pull, so I made sure I had enough gathers here so it wouldn't pull. And I did that on both sides. So it's buttoned all the way down the front, all the way down to the bottom. Um, these are all functional buttons. I figured that if I wanted to use it as a house coat, I could do that, but I think that I'm really enjoying the house dress aspect of it. I do have to button, unbutton it to about right here to get it on and off over my hips, but it does fit. It's, it's very comfortable. I didn't have a, a period appropriate belt that I liked, um, and I didn't want to cut my belt. <laughs> so I'm, these are both the same length and I know they don't look it, because I actually sewed these two in the middle. It actually belts a little bit off to the side, which I really like because then it doesn't bulk out the front and I end up, as I'm bending and doing housework, it doesn't get in the way, which is nice. These are all reclaimed buttons. They're recycled buttons. Uh, the collar that comes with the Vic truly Victorian pattern is exactly the right size. I was really surprised because I have a hard time with collars. Uh, collars and I don't always agree in construction. And this collar was really easy to put in. It's exactly the right size. These are machine done buttonholes. The way I usually do buttonholes is I put a little bit of fray check before I cut them. And I do use a buttonhole chisel. Uh, they are starting to fray a little bit. I'm just gonna have to put a little bit more fray check on it. So I did use front facing, but I used some scrap cotton fabric that I had. I pinked the inside and then hand stitched the facing to the interlining. And the interlining is just a white cotton fabric that just happens to be also 45 inches wide. I used some cotton tape on the inside of the collar just to mask that collar and give it a little bit of rigidity so it stands up nicely, which I think it works really well. Um, the interfacing does go into the shoulder, so it's sewn in at the shoulder and it goes all the way down. There is a little bit, because I wasn't, I didn't have a lot of fabric, you're gonna see that my facing doesn't actually go all the way to the hem. What's really nice about this pattern is I pre-measured from my shoulder to the ground and gave myself an extra inch all the way around. And that was exactly right. Folded up once and then up again and just sewed the whole thing down on the round. And it didn't catch the interfacing. I did sew the interfacing down in white thread, but honestly, with the pattern in this fabric, you can't even tell. If it had been a solid, I probably would have been a little bit more careful about my stitching, but because it is pretty much just masks it, <laughs> the pattern masks any of the stitching. Facing is just scrap fabric. So it's something that I had in my stash. Um, it's, ex it's actually this skirt fabric. <laughs> I keep my scraps and I use them for odds and ends like this, and it just happened to work out perfect and you do want to use the front facing on this pattern i wouldn't make it without the front facing and that gave me my button placket so that i didn't have to actually stitch in a separate button placket because these pieces were exactly the right size i didn't need to add any more fabric in the front if you measure correctly using the tv pattern and in their instructions i think it it does pretty good about fitting it now I didn't put darts in this because I'm not going to wear it with a corset. This is just a house dress, a house wrapper. Now, if I were going to make this into a garment, like a tea gown garment that I might want to wear out, um, I would probably go up a size on this front piece and put darts in. But because this is just a house dress, that's all I'm doing on it. I'm really, really pleased with it. I hemmed up the sleeves an inch. I put a belt on. I just, I really love it. It is so comfortable. It's so sweet. I'm not really big into flowers, but I love that this fabric is busy enough. It kind of hides any stitching that may or may not have been a little crooked. 
Um, it's lightweight. It's definitely summer weight. It's chilly today because it's spring in Montana and it's raining outside. I did find that I wear my green checkered house dress when it's colder because it's got a heavier sheet fabric as interlining on the inside. Uh, this is all cotton, lightweight cottons. This is for warm weather. This is for if I'm hot. This is definitely not for when I'm cold because I'll freeze in this. I'll have to wear at least two sweaters. <laughs> Good morning. It's been a couple days since I finished editing my house wrapper tea gown. Ta -da! Look at that. <clears throat> One other thing 